Uh-oh, look at this guy. Look at this guy. He's good. What are you on? What are you asking? Look at this guy. Look at him. Come on now. Let's say he's either got a, a tea time here in a little bit or he... I have both. Do you? I have both, an appointment and a tea time. Double booked. What's the appointment? Is it core exercises? Because that's what Skin Dale's check, into. man. Skin. No, I saw I saw Mr. Pilates over there. <laughs> I did that in a former life. You did? So, yeah, I went with yeah. my wife for like three or four or five years. Damn. Yeah. It used to I actually thought be you were going to say days. No, the truth, the <laughs> truth actually, if you really want to know how, how much of a throwback this is, myself and Jay Fry. Yeah. It was me, Jay Fry, and my wife. Dale told Steve us so. Addington's wife was the instructor, and I think she used to pride herself in getting to Jay and I to tap out, which didn't take a lot. So. D- Dale told us that Michael Waltrip uh, has been known to go to the all-female class that he went to with his wife. Ah. It's you- never good when you get in group two with Waltrip. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I love having you. This is a this is a, just a, a fellow host on the D- Dirty Mo Media platform right here. Dirty Mo Doe. That's right. That's right. That's what you're known I feel for like these a days. Kid here, I'm all yeah. sunk down. But so, how do you enjoy doing the Dirty Mo Doe? Oh, listen, I love it. Isn't it fun? It's, it, it's great because basically, me and Chopper talk about that every week anyway. Yeah. So now we just get to do it with some microphones. Yeah. Russell gets to come on there and act like he knows what he's the talking professor. about, and we love. When the professor messes it up, like this last week, he we were cheering Bubba Wallace on because he was emphatic that he wasn't going to run good, so we couldn't wait to tell him he had no idea what he was talking about. He yeah. said, "Fade them all, fade, fade them all the twenty three all. It's been a rough couple weeks for Denny Hamlin on the old. Uh, yeah, we shot picked on him one week, and then we picked on his race team last week. Hmm. It's a rough, it's a rough go. Yeah, no, but it's good. We've been had a lot of fun. That's um. The coolest part that I didn't expect is the interaction with all the fans on social media. So, like, they'll tell you, oh, I listened and I did this or did that. I think you're crazy. I think you're good. Like, yeah. it, it has really generated some conversation, which is uh, pretty exciting. Yeah. I think it's fun to, um, even if you don't bet, and um, it's still an entertaining listen because basically you're handicapping the field for me and helping me. Even if I don't intend to place a bet, I can listen to your show. Maybe I'm doing fantasy. Right, right. And I can listen to your show and basically understand what you think is going to happen in the race, who you think is going to run good, and I think I trust this information better because I know some people have money on it. Oh yeah, as yeah. opposed to just <laughs> some guy's opinion, right? Right. On a, you know, right. Some guy on a radio show or whatever just saying, "Hey, yeah, I like that guy. You know, I think he's going to run great this weekend. I just got a gut feeling." No, these, you know, in this moment, you know, I know you've got to really have your homework done. Well, and it's a perfect mix, right? So you have Russell, the professor, has all the stats. Like, you can't beat his stats. But then he tries to play analyst. So we got to put him in his little corners. No one knows more facts than him, but stick with the facts. Then I get to play analyst um, and kind of give my opinion of what the facts mean. And then Chopper takes all of that and says, okay, well, after hearing all of that, this is good value or bad value. You mentioned fantasy. We get a lot of social stuff about fantasy. Daily fantasy is the one we'd like to try to captivate a little bit, but the challenge is that window is small because you got to get qualifying in first. Uh, so hopefully maybe in the second half of the year we'll do yeah. some more social hits on daily fantasy. It, listen, we've had some pretty good weeks. We've had a few bad ones. Yeah. Um, and we've had some pretty monster weed. The poor chopper is, um, <laughs> you could tell by the strut and the text message. I mean, we have new terms. You've been Rick Allen. That one has come up for <laughs> have sure. Have you heard this, Dale? No. Yeah. What does that, that mean? Tell them what Rick all Allen right, means. Right. This so is it hilarious. Starts with, it starts with, um, you, you were on the broadcast with us, Kyle Larson, doubleheader at Pocono. <laughs> you know, now, listen, I pick on it because it's Rick's job. He had no choice, but. Larson's killing him. Comes off the tunnel turn, and Rick starts into his, you know, yes. his call. Right, you remember this now. Kyle Larson for the umpteenth time this year. Oh, left front flat, and he goes into the fence. So that day, <laughs> Chop had money on Larson. So he texts the one another group chain him in and goes, "Larson got Rick Allen." And I'm like, "What are you talking about, Rick Allen?" He goes, "It's like early calling a putt. If he starts ca- calling you out." You're going to lose. Yeah. So this has grown and grown and grown. So now whether we're betting on basketball, whatever it is, I actually did it to him on basketball in March Madness. I'm like, oh, yeah, whoever it was, Georgia Southern. And Chop's like, you've Rick Allen'd me. Sure as I, <laughs> sure as I send the text, 
they start to stink. So Rick Allen is now a new term. If you've been Rick Allen, that means somebody has congratulated you or said you're doing fine. And as soon as you say it. Preemptively, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like, like a jinx. Oh, it's, it's a jinx. It's, it's it the ultimate like. jinx. It is not like. It has been factually proven. If, right, if Rick is, Allen calls a win or mm-hmm. uh, if anybody predicts a win before there's an actual finish, yep. they are going to go south. I, I think it's going to move the call. You wait till the NBC coverage comes on. I bet Rick doesn't start making a winning call until we are off four. I bet he gets some dead straight to the line before he dares speak their name as the winner. So, I mean, does Rick Allen know that y'all have <laughs> turned him into a verb? Oh, we, we play golf, and we like when Rick Allen, Rick Allen's you, that's like a double whammy. And does he, what is <laughs> I his play response? golf with him. He's like, oh, nice putt. Chubb goes, you've been Rick Allen by the man. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's a whole thing. What an honor. Oh, yeah, it's what an honor. Yeah, if you've been Rick question. Allen by Rick Allen. That's <laughs> a, and then Chubb to, this week did a new one we hadn't seen yet. He Rick Allen himself. How did he do that? Um, because, so William Byron was in the wreck with the 21, and on the text thread, the Dirty Mo text thread, he said, boom, Byron, something about the hammer bet. And then I'm watching in person, and I'm like, mm, I don't think Chop knows Byron's still in the race. <laughs> and I'm watching it go around, and like 15 laps later, Talladega, we get the, what? How is Byron still out there? And Russell's like, I don't want to say anything, but you Rick Allen yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the comedy in the back is spectacular. Yeah. Well, man, it's been it's been a lot of fun, uh, you know, watching this show develop, and um, I think it there's so much potential for it, especially with the you know the uh, changes of the laws here in North Carolina, NASCAR being. Oh, I can't wait. You know, NASCAR is North Carolina. That's where that's where 95 percent of the organization and and the sport resides. And so uh, that's got to be that's got to have a pretty massive impact on on uh, the betting industry and and around motorsport. There really hasn't been much movement, you know, on on betting in NASCAR. And and I think this is a the door swinging open. Get, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the key is I, I think gambling responsibly can do what fantasy football did for the NFL, which can bring a casual fan and find the yeah. entertainment. I, I think that's the point. We, we don't try to encourage somebody to wager money they don't have. This should be adding to the entertainment value of the sport. That's yeah. the whole point of it. Yeah. Um, that's why we talk about it. We do have some surprise guests. Mike doesn't even know. Uh, Drew Parker, our buddy Drew Parker, sent what? a tweet out that said, man, I was so close to winning and this and that, and he's been texting me on the side trying to get Chopper's picks yeah. early because he's a big NASCAR wagerer. Uh, so he's agreed one cool. episode, not sure when, he's going to call into the pod and give us his NASCAR handicapping. Yeah. So we're starting to grow a little bit and um, prove that you know everyday people can have a lot of fun. It doesn't matter how much, you know, as long as you do it responsibly, it's a great time. Hey, if you like that video, you'll love the entire podcast. The Dale Jr. Download, it's available on all major podcast platforms.